All right, so today's our last assignment. Um, we did it. We did it. All right, so I'm going to um, I'm going to get us started on the space race, and then um, we'll um, we'll have sort of a mini celebration after that. All right, so. The document you should be looking at today here on Friday morning <clears throat> is the space race document. Um, first question is, what does NASA stand for? Uh, I believe it's the National Aeronautical Space and Aviation. I think that's right. Uh, let's double check just to be sure. It should be. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The National Aeronautics in Space Administration. All right, what was Sputnik 1? Look it up. Sputnik was the satellite that the Russians launched into space in 1957. Um, and that's gonna lead you to number three. How do you think Americans responded to Sputnik being launched by the Russians? Uh, we freaked out. We thought the Russians were gonna fire a laser at us. We thought they were gonna nuke us <coughs> from that satellite. Um, and that leads us to number four. What impact do you think Sputnik 1 had on schools in the United States? Um, um, Sputnik, um, the launch of Sputnik made the United States think, you know what, we need to organize our education system. We need to have a way to figure, uh, to identify our, I guess, gifted and talented, to use a term that you're familiar with. Uh, we need to identify who our engineers and our scientists are, who our mathematicians are, right? And um, at that time, the education system was very, um, very disorganized. You had, uh, at that time, uh, blacks had their own schools. Um, a lot of communities had their own smaller schools. And the U.S. government said, hey, y'all need to create what are called school districts. Hence, Jefferson County Public Schools. Now, mail and manual were already here. Um, but this is where you see the construction of build, of schools such as Fairdale, Pleasure Ridge Park, Valley, um, Fern Creek, I think, um, Southern, uh, all these schools that get built during that time, um, uh, in JC, or that are in JCPS are built around that time in response to, as part of the response to Sputnik being launched. Cool, right? And now we have organized tests such as, um, you know, the ACT, we have uh, the SAT, we have, um, when you're in elementary school, K-PREP, we're identifying who our smarter uh, students are and are who our most gifted ones are. So, number five, the immediate impact of the 1957 launch of Sputnik was that it um, heightened the space race as a form of Cold War competition. Now, all of a sudden, it's all about who can get to, who can have the, the biggest presence in outer space. Does it really matter who has, I mean, I know President Trump's created a, a branch of the government called uh, the Space Force. Um, I, I agree uh, that we need, uh, that it's, we need, it's a part of, I think it's a, more about nationalism than it is anything else to say we've got, there's an American flag floating around in space. Um, but what you got to consider is, and I'm not, this isn't me saying that we should. I'm going to, again, I'm inspiring some thought. What we have to consider is, could that money go anywhere else? And where would it, where should it go? So I need you to think about that. Uh, why do you think the NASA chose the summertime to launch Apollo 11 in 1969? Why that's the and Apollo eleven is the ship that went to the moon. Why the summertime? How about good weather? Right, you need nice weather. All right. So why do you think NASA chose? Oh, we got the two of the same question on here. Are you kidding me? Ugh. All right. Uh, take a look at uh, on the second page um, the Walter Cronkite news coverage. I want you to watch that news coverage and I want you to compare it for number eight. I want you to compare it to coverage of the Kennedy assassination. One reason why I do think the moon landing is important is that in 1969, you know, people that had lived through the 60s, it was a very turbulent decade. It was a lot of ups and downs. You had the uh, the Kennedy and uh, Nixon election in 19 in 1960 that uh, a lot of people think Kennedy cheated. You know, then you had the Bay of Pigs, and then you had the Cuban Missile, or you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, and then you had uh, the Kennedy assassination. 
right? And then all while this is going on, you also have the civil rights movement happening and all the, uh, the violence that came from that. Uh, you had the Vietnam War going on. You had uh, Martin Luther King getting assassinated. You had Bobby Kennedy getting assassinated. Um, all the protesting that took place with the civil rights, for the civil rights, and then the hippies and everything. Um, it was a, um, it was a crazy time, and America needed something to feel good about. Can we just please have some good news? And the guy who had to report that bad news every time it happened was our guy Walter Cronkite. You know, not an envious job. I mean, you'd think a, being a reporter is an easy job. It's it's not, uh, because especially if there's bad news after bad news after bad news to report. So Cronkite uh, gets the, and you can tell he's a little giddy. He's, finally, I get to report something good, right? I finally get to be report something happy. And Cronkite um, takes some great pleasure in reporting uh, the moon landing. You know, the eagle has landed. So... Um, the glee in his face when you watch this news coverage is very, thank God, maybe some relief. Um, and that's another thing you ought to think about is, were Americans more relieved or, um, was it, was the moon landing, uh, was there more relief or a sense of victory over that? I'm going to say it might've been, uh, I think a lot of Americans were flat out expecting a tragedy to take place. And when it didn't, they were like, Thank God. <laughs> so, all right. Pretend that you were alive in 1969 and had lived through all the drama of the 60s. What would be the biggest reason for your excitement over the moon landing? Well, I mean, I just pretty much explained it. Let's talk about number 10. Last one. Who was Mary Jackson? If you've seen the movie Hidden Figures, which I we wouldn't know if we were in class, we would, we would be watching it, but that's uh, not an option. Um, Sometime this summer, check out Hidden Figures. Great movie. Great movie. It's about the space race and the civil rights movement all rolled into one. Um, so who was Mary Jackson? Check the link above. Mary Jackson was one of the um, one of the engineers. Uh, she was a black woman that worked behind the scenes in helping uh, the moon landing take place. Um, her and two other ladies. Um, check that out. Um, it's an excellent movie. I think uh, you'll enjoy it. So, All right. That is it for... 2020 so uh it, it for this school year so i want to let you guys know how proud of you i am um uh what else um i do need to make the announcement that um i will not be returning to fairdale next year um that was a decision that was actually probably made last summer in 2019 um so i've pretty much known all year I would be moving on um has nothing to do with has nothing to do with Fairdale it's more of a um it's not you it's me type situation um as a teacher every now and then I've been at Fairdale for nine years and as a teacher every now and then you're ready for a fresh start um and that's where I'm at so I'm ready for a fresh start it's uh maybe time to time to regroup uh as an educator um and you know Maybe not, uh, and it's not so much uh, greener pastures, it's not, um, it's more like changing, like if you're driving in a car and you're in a three or four lane road, it's more just about changing lanes. I've got a path, uh, some goals I'm trying to reach as an educator, um, and I feel like I'm um, just gonna, it's time to switch lanes and, and see if this lane can get me there. So, um, it's been awesome. So, I'll be posting something on Instagram, probably on the very last day so look out for that um it's been it's been great working with you guys you've been a good group this year um and uh you know where to find me on social media so you'll have my email so if there's anything you ever need you know you can reach out and um otherwise i will look forward to seeing you at Fairdale Games when I come back and visit i'll look forward to seeing you around town working at your jobs and um Hey, uh, the beat goes on, right? So, all right, wanted to go ahead and tell you all that. So, I'm going to miss you, and um, all I can tell you is keep working hard, push in your chairs. <laughs> Bye, guys.